Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the news, TwitchCon has upset the Twitterverse, and for good reason. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but we are still trying to get out of a pandemic. I know it sounds crazy, but it's still kind of a problem here in the States and it might be where you are as well. And yeah, I know there are probably a few of you right now who are like, Jesse, don't you live in that leftist hipster enclave of California? And yeah, I mean, I do, but let's be real. We have our fair share of wackos and like, only mother nature can tell me what I put in my body types and that's just as bad as anyone else. Oh, and there are like 4 million people who live in LA and we have 50,000 new cases a day. So yeah, we're trying to be safe, but you know, big crowds, indoors, people still get sick. It happens. So that makes this next story kind of ridiculous. TwitchCon, which is taking place October 7th through 9th in San Diego, says under its health measures portion of the website that TwitchCon San Diego will be presented in accordance with applicable public health and safety guidelines as of the date of the event, which means that the health and safety measures for our event may change at any time as determined by federal or local government agencies, the venue, and or Twitch. Now, if you're wondering, there are no real guidelines at the moment. You can just show up sick as hell, which people have been doing at conventions. We saw it earlier this year with PAX, we saw it again with Anime Expo, and we saw it with Comic-Con just a few weeks ago. There, we got reports of all sorts of people getting COVID, which means people just went to the con sick, and people do that. They're like, I already paid for the tickets in the hotel. What's a little cough between friends? And then you find out that George R.R. R. Martin has COVID, and even though you convinced yourself that he's never gonna finish those last two books, you're also just like, not like this. Not like this. And that's all with Comic-Con mandating masks and proof of vaccination. You've probably seen a lot of people retweeting this tweet in particular, and honestly, the consensus seems to be I'll pass. But let's be real, I was already gonna pass anyway, so I'm not really ready to return to big giant conventions yet, and this is just another reason. It's not because I'm terrified of COVID, it's I'm terrified of dumb people. In other news, remember yesterday we were talking about Microsoft and Sony and how they were petitioning people on whether Microsoft should be able to acquire Activision Blizzard and Sony was really upset about Call of Duty being an insurmountable bit of competition for anyone trying to make a similar FPS game, that kind of thing, whatever. Anyway, more Call of Duty news and uh, of course, because it's Activision, it's not good. Because Activision Blizzard strikes again, this time saying that paid premium content is coming to the franchise in 2023. Across the Call of Duty ecosystem, the teams are well positioned to support these launches with substantial live operations, while also continuing development of new premium content planned for 2023 and beyond. Activision said in a statement during its quarter two 2022 earnings report, according to Video Game Chronicle. Now what could all that Corpo legal speak mean? Well, it could be anything from paid DLC to new forms of microtransactions, maybe a more premium variety, even down to standalone content like zombies, for instance. This comes after Activision Blizzard said that its quarter two revenue has declined year over year for 2022, which seems absolutely crazy to me since they reported that Diablo Immortal, the title that is more meme than mobile game, has earned $100 million and has 30 million players in just the first couple months of its existence. And yeah, while well, to me at least the numbers don't really add up, it does explain why their goals as a company are changing. Why spend all this time working on games you're just basically giving away for 70 bucks and instead put all of your funds, all of your energy, all your resources into things like Diablo Immortal that make you a ton of money and can continue to do so with new future microtransactions that people clearly are willing to buy. For the amount of people like you and me who sit here and are like, I don't know, microtransactions, that doesn't seem good to me. There are clearly many people out there willing to fork over a ton of money. Like this one dude who spent $100,000 on the game, and he's such a powerful character in Diablo Immortal that he cannot matchmake with anyone right now. He's more powerful than anyone else, so the matchmaking system is just like, I don't know what to do, bud. And that, I know it seems like a weird story to just be like, oh, that guy spent a bunch of money, haha, <laughs> now he's too powerful. But also, that guy spent $100,000. I don't think Blizzard's looking at that thinking, well, we've screwed up. I feel like they're like, oh, damn. 
Let's get a couple more people to spend that kind of money. It's, it's just crazy to me. Hopefully you have some thoughts for the comments below because sometimes I just don't know what to say about it. Speaking of things I don't know what to say about, ooh, that's weird. <laughs> Go over to youtube.com slash coxclips. What do I say about it? It's got everything that you could possibly want that isn't on this channel. It's got the fods, it's got the shorts, it's got all sorts of stuff. We have a short over there that I think is like, it. Think, that thing blew up. If you wanna see me be silly, that's the place to do it. Or, or the end of these videos, that works too. Anyway, that's it. I will see y'all tomorrow for another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.